So in a gas, you have lots of particles moving randomly. I say particles because they might be atoms in a gas like neon, or they might be molecules in a gas like oxygen, but they're particles, and they move in random directions, random motion. And they bump into each other every now and then. That's called a collision. They also bump into the sides of the containers. And whenever they bump into the sides of the containers, they transfer a little bit of force to the wall. And that force is the pressure that we feel on a container. It's the gas molecules, gas particles, bouncing off the walls and kind of pushing the walls out. And we have to push the walls in. So collisions with the walls of the container create a force on the walls, which we call pressure. Here's two gases. We've got a cold gas and a hot gas. So here in my cold gas, you can see I've drawn little arrows to show that everything's moving in random directions and colliding with the walls and making a little bit of pressure whenever they hit the walls. Over here, I've got a hot gas. And look, my particles are moving much faster. The heat energy exhibits itself as kinetic energy in the particles of gas. In fact, we measure the kinetic energy of the particles of the gas when we measure the temperature. So here I've drawn big arrows to show that these gas particles are moving fast. They've got lots of kinetic energy. They're moving fast. If you imagine a room full of students moving slowly, we kind of wander around, don't bump into each other a lot. If you take those same students and make them run in the same space, they're going to bump into themselves, they're going to bump into the walls, there's going to be a lot more collisions because they're moving faster, they're in more places. So here they're bumping into the walls more often and with more energy, so they're making a bigger force on the walls. So when you've got a hot gas, you've got more kinetic energy, more collisions, and more pressure. As temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. As temperature goes down, the pressure goes down. Think of a bicycle pump. If you ever put your finger over the end of a bicycle pump and squeeze the air, then you've been messing with those gas particles. Here's a, a pump that's all the way full of air. Everything's relaxed. And you can see the gas particles moving around. Now, if we push that down really hard, we squeeze all of those gas particles into a small space. It's more crowded. We've also done a lot of work to push it down. That's hard work, right? That energy that we put into squeezing the gas gets transferred to the gas particles. So they move faster. So we've packed them closer together and we've made them move faster. It gets hot. It gets hot. That extra energy we gave them, when we compress a gas, we do the work, the energy to squeeze it. The energy, energy gets transferred to the gas particles and that increases the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is what we measure with temperature. It feels hot. If you keep the pressure, if you, the vol as the volume goes up, the temperature goes down. As the volume gets smaller, the temperature goes up. What happens if we put more gas into a container? Well, the classic example is a balloon. You start with an empty balloon, you blow air into it, and it gets bigger. That's because a balloon's stretchy. It can get bigger. If we blew more air into a metal box, for example, which could not get bigger, what would happen is there'd be more particles in there and they'd bounce off the walls more and so the pressure would go up. So we, we count 
how much gas particle we have with N. It's the number of moles. We'll talk about moles later, but that's how we count atoms in chemistry. We count them in moles, like we count eggs in dozens. As the number of gas particle goes up, if it can, the volume goes up. But if we hold the volume steady in a metal box, the pressure goes up. If you've got less gas, you get less volume and less pressure. Hot gas, cold gas again, but this time volume. And this is an experiment you can do in the summer if you live somewhere hot. Um, if you get a balloon, blow it up nice and big outside in the sun, and then bring it inside and put it in the refrigerator. It'll get smaller. Why does it get smaller? Because in here the gas particles are whizzing around like crazy because they're hot. When you cool them down, they slow down. They take their time. They don't bump into the sides as much as they used to. They don't take up as much space because they're moving more slowly and kind of taking their time. So when the temperature goes up, the volume goes up if it can. If it can't, if you've got it in a metal box, it's like the first picture I showed you. It just gets a higher pressure. As the temperature goes down, the volume goes down, or if it can't get smaller, the pressure goes down.